This is shocking. Everyone was expecting interest rates to rise, but not like this. Back in January, the market was anticipating that the Bank of England's base rate would rise to a peak of 1.25%. But by August, rates had already risen to 1.5%, with the expectation that they could reach 2.75% next year. Only a month later, and they'd already risen to 2.5% and were expected to hit 4.5%. But as you know, since the government's ill-fated mini-budget, things have got dramatically worse to where we are today with the market anticipating that the Bank of England's base rate could rise to 5.5% by the middle of next year. And that expectation is already feeding through into mortgages. This time last year, you could get a two-year fixed rate mortgage at a 75% loan to value at 1.3%. Six months ago, that was up to 2.3%. Two months ago, it was 3.5%. And today, the average rate for a two-year fixed is over 6%. That's the highest rate since 2008. And the expectation is that this will continue to rise into 2023. This poll shows that of those of you that have mortgages, roughly 40% of you have a fixed rate that is going to expire within the next two years. And another 45% of you within the next five. So you need to start preparing yourself for higher rates now. We have no control over how high interest rates might go or what might happen with house prices. So I'm not going to waste your time making predictions about the future when, as we've seen, predictions are almost always wrong. But there are practical steps that you should be taking now to prepare yourself for the future. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I've been preparing my clients, why you might want to apply for a new mortgage right now, and why you should not be paying off your mortgage just yet. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is James. I am a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. The first thing that you need to establish is what high interest rates are going to mean for your monthly cash flow. The prospect of going from paying 1.5% to 6% sounds terrible, but you need to understand exactly how much this is actually going to change your monthly payments so that you can get in front of it and then start finding solutions. The quickest way to understand this is to use a mortgage calculator. And I've actually built one that you can use to see this easily. In this example, we've got a 200K repayment mortgage with 15 years left on its term. At a 1.5% interest rate, monthly payments are £1,250 per month. But if interest rates go up to 5%, you'd be looking at £1,580 per month. Although interest rates have quadrupled, the monthly payment has only gone up by £330 or 22%. It's still a hell of a lot, but perhaps less than you might have originally expected. I've left a link to this calculator down in the description, so please do give this a go because you'll only be able to start finding solutions once you have this data in front of you. Now, this first strategy we're going to look at is absolutely vital if you want to secure the lowest rate possible when you refixed. I talked about this strategy in my last video, but this time we're going to take it one step further. My own fixed rate mortgage is about to expire at the end of November. So seven months ago, back in May, I started working with my colleague Ben, our mortgage advisor, to find a new fixed rate. Santander was offering 2.59% for a two-year fixed, so we submitted an application so that by the time that June came round, exactly six months before my fixed term was due to end, I had that offer locked in. Typically, your existing lender won't notify you that your fixed term is coming to an end until you're three months out. And even if you do get in touch with them, they'll only let you book in a new rate three or four months in advance. But when you're getting an offer from a new lender, you can lock in a rate six months before your fixed term is set to finish. And you can have the new rate start once the old one has expired. And the beauty of this is that I don't have to accept this offer. I can just sit on it and wait and see what happens over the next six months. And if I do find a better deal, I can just change. Whereas when you remortgage with your existing lender, they lock you into that rate straight away and you can't get out of it. Now. As it happens, in July, my existing lender actually reduced their rates below Santander, and I ended up fixing with them at 2.49% 
for three years. If you want to give yourself the best possible chance of getting the lowest rate available, it is vital that you follow this strategy. You also want to make sure that you add any product fees to the mortgage so that you don't have to pay anything up front. And make sure not to apply for too many mortgages in a short space of time because each one involves a hard search on your credit file that can affect your credit rate. This strategy is pretty simple, but let me show you how we can take this one step further. Back in April of this year, I was catching up with a client of mine who was feeling pretty stressed about the prospects of rising rates and that their monthly payments could become unsustainable. Their current mortgage was fixed at 1.2%, but that fixed term was due to end in November 20. 23, 18 months from the time that we were speaking. So we had a conversation with my mortgage broker, Ben, and we decided to make an application for a new five-year fixed mortgage with Nationwide at a rate of 2.6%, which sounded like a hell of a lot at the time. But again, this was only an offer. We still had six months to wait and see if we wanted to take it up. And if interest rates fell during that period of time, we could have switched to a new lower rate or binned it off entirely. Or if interest rates rose, we could then decide decide to accept that offer and pay off her existing mortgage early. This gave my client the peace of mind that whatever happened with interest rates over the next six months, she was protected and this whole process didn't cost her anything. Fast forward to today and the best rate that she can get on an equivalent mortgage is 5.39%. Now, accepting that 2.6% offer may seem like a no-brainer, but we also need to consider the fact that she'll be giving up her existing lower rate of 1.2% a year early, and she's gonna have to pay an early repayment charge. And early repayment charges typically work like this. If you repaid a five-year fixed rate mortgage in the first year that you had it, you'd pay a 5% fee. If you had less than two years, you'd pay 2%, and if you had less than one year, you'd pay 1%. In this case, we made sure to time the start of her new mortgage so that she had just less than one year remaining and she'd only have to pay 1%. And instead of paying this from cash, we just added this cost to the new mortgage. Working out the exact break-even rate beyond which it makes sense to ditch your current mortgage is a very complex calculation. But again, I've included a link down in the description to a calculator that can work this out for you. Now, even if rates don't rise, you may still want to take up this offer. As an example, let's say that you've used my calculator and you've worked out that even though it's going to be painful, you could just about survive with interest rates at 5%. But if interest rates go up to 7%, you'd really be in trouble. As such, you may want to take up an offer, even if it's at 5% and suck up any early repayment charges, rather than risk rates rising to 7%, where you may be forced to sell your home and could perhaps lose even more money. It's a tough position to be in, but perhaps that's the price that you need to pay for peace of mind. So you might be thinking, why the hell isn't everyone just applying for a new mortgage right now? If you don't have to commit to anything, are there any downsides? Well, I would highly recommend that you do this through a mortgage broker rather than trying to do this yourself as they can quickly give you access to the best rates available and they can help you with these complex calculations. Now, many mortgage brokers do not charge customers directly. Instead, they earn their fees from the lender. But... If you don't go ahead with the mortgage, then obviously that broker won't get paid. And if it's obvious that your application is purely speculative, then that broker may charge you an upfront fee of about £500. But if that £500 can give you the peace of mind that you need over the next six months and perhaps save you tens of thousands of pounds, well, it's probably worth it. Okay, so now onto the big one. If you have cash left over at the end of the month, should you be overpaying your mortgage or investing that money in something else? With interest rates going through the roof, paying down your mortgage offers a high guaranteed return. If your mortgage is at 5%, then overpaying your mortgage is effectively giving you a guaranteed 5% return on that money. But for most people, overpaying your mortgage does not make sense right now. Let's say you're currently on a fixed rate of 1.5% that's due to expire in just over a year's time. You could choose to overpay your mortgage and you'd get an effective return of 1.5%. But because interest rates have risen so much recently, the yield offered by savings accounts and fixed term deposits is as high as 4.5%. So you could just invest in that for a risk-free 3% 
return. In addition, when you overpay a mortgage, that money is gone and you can't get it back easily in the case of an emergency. But with a savings account or even with a fixed term deposit, you can get that money back if you really need it. The only downside is tax. Now that savings accounts are actually paying high levels of interest, you need to remember that that might be taxed as income. We each get an annual tax-free savings allowance, which means that we can receive up to a thousand pounds of interest each year, and we don't have to pay any tax on that. Although you do lose this allowance if you are a higher earner. If, however, it looks like you're going to go over this limit, you could just use a cash ISA instead. They are tax-free and offer just as good rates. As interest rates continue to rise, we're going to start to see lots of interesting arbitrage opportunities like this. As an example, I have another client who's recently retired and currently does not have a mortgage, but we've been talking about the fact that he might want to release some equity from his home in the future ahead of him potentially downsizing. We weren't planning on doing this for a number of years, but given the prospect of rising interest rates in June, we decided to get a mortgage offer for £200,000 fixed for five years at 2.6%. But that mortgage was not due to start until December. This didn't cost him anything and it worked. With fixed term deposits currently paying 4.6%, my client could in theory borrow that £200,000, stick it in a five year fixed term deposit and make a 20K profit with zero risk. At all. This type of thing won't be suitable for most people and you need to be mindful of tax, but it's just one example of how the investing landscape totally changes in a rising rate environment. So if the rates available on risk-free savings accounts are higher than the current rate of your mortgage after accounting for tax, it does not make sense to overpay your mortgage. And given how quickly rates have risen in the last month, this will apply to pretty much everyone. Not only will this give you a better return, but it will also give you better flexibility because you can access that cash if you really need it. And when you come to actually refix your mortgage, you can still use that cash to reduce your overall balance. I know the next question that you've got in your head. Would you be better off investing in a fixed term savings account or would you be better off investing in the stock market? Now, my next video is going to focus entirely on this topic, but for now, let me leave you with this. In the short term, the stock market is extremely unpredictable. So if you need this money within the next few years, you should definitely not be investing in the stock market. But for most of you, even if you are about to retire, your investment horizon is much longer than you think. And you may not need this money for 20 or even 30 years. Right now, you can get 4.5% in a savings account, taking absolutely no risk whatsoever. So over the long term, investors in more risky assets like stocks should expect a higher return than that risk-free rate. This is the founding principle of investing and one that every investor must believe in. Of course, there will be periods when you would have been better off keeping your cash in a bank, but we cannot predict when those will be in advance. This is what we sign up for when we invest in stocks. We agree to endure short-term pain for long-term gains. But if the recent stock market crash has got you questioning your faith, you'll be feeling a lot better after you watch this video here. I'll see you there.